pissed off at your mother. Good grief. Stand up tall and proud, girl. Good morning, everyone. Brian and Tristan here. Welcome to Foundation Church in Clovis, California. We're so glad to have you on this beautiful Wednesday day from wherever you call home. You know, we know that church at home is not on the home. back row back, or should back there. Look it hasn't been for us either. But let's encourage each other to keep going, to take what God has given us and never give up. Yes, and we do have a couple of ways that you can stay connected with us to Foundation Church at Primary Home. You can find us on Instagram at Foundation Church Clovis, our Facebook page, also our YouTube channel at Foundation Church Clovis, and our website at bcclovis.com. Mm -hmm. Yep. And on the website, you can catch past sermons just in case you missed one. You can download sermon notes and even catch a devotional blog, all from the media page. Yes, and we would love to pray with you right now because prayer right now is really, really the biggest thing mm -hmm. that is our, our lifeline. Um, and if you can do that from the website, um, just click on the email link. Yeah, that's right. And if you're wondering how you can give um, at a time like this, of course you can you can uh, use our use our simple mail system, but you can also go to the website if you would like to do that. We have a very simple giving link on there. And we thank you in advance for all your faithfulness to give during a very difficult time. All right, well, let's get into service. And uh, remember, we're in this together. Good morning. Welcome to Foundation. We're just uh, kind of enjoying some music already from an old hymn, There is a Fountain. We want to start with that today. Those of you at home, you know this old hymn. Sing it with us. There is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins and sinners past be
he took all of our stains on that cross. What a fierce love, right? I love those old hymns, and I love the new songs that are written with those modern words. Have you ever thought about describing Jesus' love as fierce? How fierce can it be for him to go to the cross? So powerful. on Facebook and uh, YouTube Live, and, and I'm just excited to share with you today just some, some really good stuff on just don't give up. Just don't give up. The Bible's going to share with us several different avenues about not losing heart and different avenues of our life, but sometimes we just need some encouraging stuff, and I've asked Annabelle to, uh, to read some scripture that is really important to her, so Annabelle, would you like to share us some scripture, please? So I picked out five scriptures, and I put them in a letter for someone I care a lot about because... He is having brain surgery on Tuesday. So five of the scriptures I have are Deuteronomy 31, 8. The Lord himself goes before you, and he will be with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. Proverbs 17, 22. A cheerful heart is good medicine, but a crushed spirit dries the bones. 
Jeremiah 30, 17. But I will restore you to health and heal your wounds. 1 Peter 5, 7. Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. And then finally we have 3 John 1, 2. Dear friend, I pray that you may enjoy good health and that all may go well with you, even as your soul is getting along well. Thank you, Belle. You know, Scripture can soothe our, soothe our hearts. It can get us through a lot of different things. Scripture is alive, and when it talks to people, it talks to the heart. And today, my, my prayer for you during this time that we have together is that you will not only open your mind, but you'll open your heart to receive the worship, to receive the Scripture, to receive a message that can really help us all during this time that we live in. I know there's a lot of different prayer requests out there, and I, I get several during the week, but, you know, if you'd like to be uh, prayed for, I would love to pray for you and pray alongside of you. So if you'll join me right now in prayer, Lord, we come before you today. And Lord, we just lift up all of those who are, who are sick, all of those who are going through challenges. And Lord, just as Annabelle's friend's going to have surgery here in just a couple days, and Lord, we want to encourage each person. Lord, that you would give the doctors wisdom, give them guidance. But also, God, that each person out there who is sick, each person out there who needs comfort, each person out there who is dealing with worry and anxiety and fear, fatigue, Lord, that you would be their strength. Lord, that you would empower them to not lose hope and to not give up. Because, God, you are in control. And no matter what we see, you are still in control of what we can't see. Lord, help us to trust you and to follow you. Lord, I give you this day, and I pray you will open our hearts and our minds to receive what you have for us today, God. Bless this day. Bless this service. Bless all of these families and people out in their homes and different places. Lord, I pray that you bless them in great ways. In your name we pray. Amen. I love a phrase in this song that we're going to sing. It says, I've taken on your name. And it hit me this morning. I'm a Christian. Christ, Christian. I've taken on Christ's name as, as my identity. Oh, so powerful. <coughs> You called me out of darkness You silenced every light And no other voice can find me I belong to you I belong to you By your blood I've been adopted I've taken on your name And I need to be reminded That I belong to you I belong to you No, the enemy can Take what I have Or change who I am No, the enemy can take what I have, change who I am. I belong to you. I belong to you. By your blood, I've been adopted. I've taken on your name, and I mean. Greater are you who's in me than you who's in the world. 
you have spoken are stronger than the curse. Greater are you who's in me than he who's in the world. The words that you have spoken are stronger than the curse. Greater are you who's in me than he who's in the world. The words that you have spoken are stronger than the curse. Greater are you who's in me than he who's in the world. The words that you have spoken are stronger than the curse. No, the enemy can't take what I have or change who I am. I belong to you. No, the enemy can't take what I have or change who I am. Miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my 
Good morning, everyone. I am, uh, I'm really looking forward to spending some time today on this subject of don't give up. And uh, don't give up, as a, as a coach for many years, that's kind of one of the phrases I've had forever. Um, when the chips are down, don't give up. When you don't feel like you can, don't give up. Um, a phrase that I've used for years and years with players is, I believe more in you than you believe in yourself, so don't give up. Keep pushing forward. Stay in the game. Stay moving. Don't stop. I know you're tired. Break through the wall. Keep moving. Don't give up. And today I want to share with you scripture about don't give up. But yet scripture is going to show us that we are going to be prone to get worn down. And when you get worn down, what does that look like for us? How do we keep moving forward to not give up? You know, there's a man that, that is a really good example of not giving up. And uh, his name, of course, is Colonel Sanders. And Colonel Sanders had that, that face up on him that just made you smile. And I, I want to read this to you because it just, it just encapsules not giving up. Colonel Harlan Sanders was fired from a variety of jobs throughout his career before he first started cooking chicken in his roadside shell service station in 1930 when he was 40 years old during the Great Depression. His gas station didn't actually have a restaurant, so he served dinners in his attached personal living space. <laughs> Over the next 10 years, he perfected his secret recipe and pressure fryer cooking method for his famous fried chicken and moved into bigger locations. His chicken was even praised in the media by food critic Duncan Hines. However, as the interstate came through the Kentucky town where Colonel Sanders' restaurant was located, and, and he was broke. It broke him. Where his location was was away from the, from the interstate, and all of the needed traffic was gone. The colonel was forced to close his business and retire, and essentially was broke. Worried about how he was going to survive off of a meager $105 a month pension check, he set out to find a restaurants, find restaurants who would franchise his secret recipe. All he wanted was a nickel for each piece of chicken sold. He drove around sleeping in his car, and he was rejected over a thousand times before he finally found his first partner. And that's called not giving up. That's called persevering. That's called sticking it out. And today, we all know Colonel Sanders. We drive by his place, and we know what that's like. You know, I've got one other I want to share with you. And this, I want you to see this video. Goal. Goal. 
you know, you never can give up. There's two phrases, two sides to that story right there, that, that little video. I found it, and I was like, this is so cool. Number one, the poor guy who kicked the ball. When he first kicked the ball and he hit the crossbar, I'm sure he was dejected. I'm sure he felt like, oh, I failed. And the goalie, when it first hit that crossbar and he dove for all his might and it bounced off, I'm sure he was ecstatic that he had succeeded. But yet sometimes if we just don't give up and we let it play out, great things can happen. You see, once the kicker kicked the ball, it was out of his control. He went from dejection to excitement because the ball had a spin on it that no one knew about. You see, sometimes we're the goalie, and we have a great moment, and we celebrate too soon. And we give up on what we're supposed to be tasked on, focused, and something falls through the crack. On both sides of that story, you can see, don't give up. Don't give up. I want us to know that God wants us to continue to fight through and not give up on what we do. It's really important. Will you join me in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 16 through 18? I want to capture this little bit of time we have together and, and share with you some, some thoughts on not giving up. From Apostle Paul. Apostle Paul was an amazing man. He is the epitome of, of a, a perseverer. He was, his life was... was was intense. Um, he's the real deal. When he was not a follower of Jesus Christ, he was an intense man chasing down those who followed Jesus Christ. When he met Jesus on the Damascus Road, his life was radically changed. And from that point on, instead of being the persecutor, he became the persecuted. He spent many nights in jail. He was whipped and beaten many times. He was stoned. He was shipwrecked. Yet he was never, he never gave up. But here in this verse, I want you to read with me in verse number 16 of chapter 4 of 2 Corinthians. It says, therefore, we do not lose heart, even though our outer man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we do not look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Paul is very clear on this, but I want you to see something that connects verse number 1, chapter 4, verse number 1. Therefore, since we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we do not lose heart. And then again in verse number 16, therefore we do not lose heart heart. Uh, one of the hardest things that we can do in life is to, is to stay strong without wearing out. To stay strong without wearing out. Sometimes we get, we get caught up in things. And I want you to see that these two, these two phrases in these two places, verse number one, verse number two, do not lose heart. It doesn't mean that you just crumble. Um, it doesn't mean that you take your heart out, of course. It doesn't mean that at all. But it does have a dual meaning. It has a dual meaning. Do not lose heart. And that dual meaning is this. It says, don't give in to the fear that paralyzes me, number one. And number two, don't get fatigued so that it will make you quit. So it's a dual meaning. Don't lose heart means don't get so fearful that it paralyzes you. But also don't get so fatigued that you quit. Here's what Paul is getting at. He's saying, hey, ministry, ministry can wear you down. Ministry can be taxing. He says in here that his outward man is perishing, but his inward man is being renewed day by day. Verse number 17, our light affliction. I don't know about you, but when I, when I recant all of the things that Paul went through, the beatings, the stonings, the jail time, the floggings, all of the things that he went through physically, and yet he calls those light afflictions. He calls those light afflictions. In other words, Paul kept his eyes beyond the, the, the stuff right here. And he looked into something else. And he says, listen, the devil wants to scare you. And he wants to create fear in you. And let's just get real about it for a little bit. Satan wants to have you give up. Satan wants you to give up worshiping God. 
Satan wants you to give up reading scripture every day. Satan wants you to give up praising God. Satan wants you to give up praying to God. Satan wants you to give up encouraging others. Satan wants you to give up coming to church when we can, which right now is a virtual event. He wants you to stop doing it. He wants you to stop all of those things, and he wants to put fear in you. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse number 8. If I can get there quickly, I want to read it to you. It says, for all these things above, uh, that's first number. That's chapter four. Chapter five. Be sober. Be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. You know, you've heard that scripture a lot. Let me give you this real quick. Satan wants to sneak fear into your life, and the roaring lion part is part of that. You know, the lions. I, I did a little research on lions because they intrigued me, and one of the things that I found on lions is they they have a communication level. They roar with a very unique roar, and that roar talks to the others. And in that roar, there is a roar that intrepids fear into everything around it. It scares everything around it. It brings fear to everything around it. The power of the lion, the male lion, is to create that fear of protection. And what Satan here is, he's related back to that because it's like he wants to create fear in each one of us. Fear to hold us back. I don't know about you, but I, I don't don't we sometimes just get tired of, of struggling with fear of the devil? Things that he creates. Don't you get tired of fear? Fear can wear you down. Number two, don't don't get so fatigued. Sometimes we're fighting so hard that we wear ourselves down. And we get fatigued to the point of quitting. To the point of quitting. I, years ago I had a football player that came to me. And he said, Coach, I'm j- I'm gonna quit. And I said, Well. He said, I'm sorry to hear that. I said, because quitting can become a habit. And he looked at me. And I said, quitting can become a habit. Once you start quitting, you'll begin to quit more. And I hope that you don't take this moment of football and help it be a springboard for you to quit other things in your life. I hope that you will take this moment in football and you will stick it out and you will fight through it. And you will pace yourself through it so that you will develop a a level of integrity and discipline for your entire life. You see, when we start getting fatigued, we want to quit. The challenge with quitting is that we sometimes quit just short of something that's going to be great in our life. You know, when we quit, we never know what was just on the other side of that quit. When we quit, we could be just short of something great, or we could still be a long ways off, but we never know because we quit. Quitting gives you the what if, and you left with what if the rest of your life. Quitting means you didn't finish what you started. Christian, let me just ask you straightforward. Have you quit things in your life that you know you should not have quit? There are other areas in our life that are bad for us that we do need to quit. But there are areas in our life that we need to continue to press forward on and not quit. Not give up. Not give up. You see, Paul was very clear with us. He says, I, it's easy to get worn down. It's easy to get fear welled up, and it's easy to get fatigued. But let me encourage you not to. We just sang a song that I... I really liked it. It was our third song. And one of the phrases in that song says, the enemy can't take what I have. I belong to you. The enemy can't take what I have. I belong to you. You know, I want us to understand that Satan wants you to stop everything that God does for you. He wants to stop you from it. He wants to make you feel less worthy. He wants you to feel guilty. He wants to make you feel shameful. He wants you to feel like you have no value. Let me, let me stay it straight. If you don't feel like you have value, understand that Jesus gave his life for you. If no one else gives you value in this world, Jesus gave his life for you. That's enough. That's enough. 
Let's move forward with this and look at the outward man and the inward man. Just real quickly in this little scripture, it says this. Therefore, we do not lose heart. Even though our outward man is perishing, yet our inward man is being renewed day by day. The outward man is perishing. I don't know about you, but now that I'm hitting an age, I can feel the outward man perishing. My skin is different than it was just 10 years ago. My physical stamina is different than it was 10 years ago. My hair is totally different than it was 10 years ago. Everything changes on the exterior. And I am prone to see what I can see as an issue. Now, the inward man is completely different. The inward man renews himself day by day. What is the inward man? The inward man is the one that is is the soul, the one that the Holy Spirit dwells within. The inward man is the one that craves to be renewed by God day by day, and it looks at what is unseen. It looks at the eternal side of life. It looks at the eternal side of life. Colossians 3.2 says, Set your mind on things above, not on things of earth. Let me ask you straightforward. How much time do we spend looking at things not on this earth? How much time do we spend thinking of eternal things than earthly things? You may say, I I spend a lot of time. Man, I'm glad you do. And I know there are those out there that do. But there may be some in in, in, in the Facebook and YouTube world that may not spend hardly any time at all even thinking about eternity or, the, or moving to heaven or what that looks like. We may not see our life as an eternal peace. We may not see any part of that because we're so focused on, on the outward man. We spend so much time making sure the outward man looks good, is in shape, it does all these things. The world is all about the outward man. But the outward man is decaying day by day. The inward man renews day by day. If you're a mature Christian, let me just be straight with you. You should be the most at peace of anyone now. If you're a mature Christian who renews day by day, you should be the most at peace, not the one spreading fear. So often, we start seeing what's in front of us, and we let that fear overtake us. And before long, we spread the fear. It's easier to spread fear than it is confidence. And before long, we have spread fear into people that we can't get it back from. Once you spread fear, it is outside your parameter now to help them move forward. You have stunted that. And you got to be careful with that have to be careful. A lot of Christians right now are absolutely scared to death. I, and I'm like, hold on, relax. Well, you don't understand what's going on, Pastor. No, I, I, I do. Maybe not from your mindset, but I do. Let me just be straight with all of you. And this may offend you, but I'm going to be straight with you. God is in control. Done. But you don't understand what's happening day by day. I do. I see it. I watch it. Does it make you nervous? It's going to make me humanly nervous. But I know my hope is in the Lord. Done. Well, how can you be so strong? Because I have to. Because I have to. Why do you have to? Because I belong to him. No other reason. I belong to him. These three little passages, I want you to see them real quick, and you can turn there if you'd like to. I'm not going to. I'm going to tell you about each one of them. Exodus chapter 17, verse number 11, is the whole don't quit thing. Moses is on top of the hill, and they're fighting down below. And Moses has his arms up, and as long as his arms are up, they're winning the battle. But when his arms grow weary, they lose the battle. What does it show us physically? It shows us physically we're going to get tired. What's it also show us? That two men came up, put a rock underneath him, and then they held his arms up. It shows us that we need each other. 
It shows that we're going to get tired in well-doing, but we need each other to help us out. We need to encourage each other. Hey, one of the hardest things to do is to reach out and encourage someone, but it's the most important thing to do because you don't know what their life looks like. Their life is different than yours. And you don't know what's behind that, that shell. Everyone needs to be encouraged. Everyone needs to be encouraged. Exodus chapter 17, verse number 11 shows us that we will grow weary in doing well, but God is there to pick up those arms and he's going to bring people alongside of us to encourage us along the fight. Deuteronomy 31, 6 through 8. I love this one. I really enjoyed this one because it's Moses talking to the entire nation just before he is no longer, he can't go into the promised land. He's talking to the whole nation and he's encouraging them to be strong and courageous. Yeah, 31 let me, I'm going to go there. I want you to see this, to read this with me. If you got your Bible with you in, in your home, pull it out and, and read it. Deuteronomy chapter 31. I know it's a book we hardly ever look at, but I want you to look at it. 31 verse number six. This is Moses talking to the nation of Israel at this time. He says, be strong and of good courage. Do not fear nor be afraid of them for the Lord your God. He is, on, he is the one who goes with you. He will not leave you nor forsake you. Then Moses called Joshua and said to him in the sight of all of Israel, be strong and of good courage for you must go with this people to the land which the Lord has sworn to their fathers to give them and you shall cause them to inherit it. And the Lord, he is one who goes before you. He will be with you. He will not leave you nor forsake you. Do not fear nor be dismayed. Twice in this thing, Moses tells the nation, do not fear. The one God will go with you nor he will never forsake you. Then he pulls Joshua, the new leader, and says, listen, do not be afraid. Fear will come in. Do not be afraid. The Lord is with you. He will give you what he promised. He will go with you. Do not be dismayed. Christian, why do we get so fearful? I know, it's human. I get it. See, Pastor, you've never been fearful? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And to be honest with you, I call it sin. When I get that fearful that I don't trust God, it's sin. But yet the Lord will go with me. Joshua 1.6. Now we have Joshua and God is speaking to Joshua. These are the same words that Moses displayed over here. God gave Moses those words to tell Joshua and the nation of Israel. Now God is going to tell Joshua those exact words. Verse number 6 of chapter 1 of Joshua. Be strong and courageous for your people. You shall divide them in the inheritance of the Lamb, which I have sworn to the fathers to give them. Only be strong and very courageous. God is like wanting us to be strong. What are we strong in? Him. 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 Do you trust God? Do you trust God? I beat that horse pretty good, and I got to be honest with you. I said it seven weeks ago, and I'm going to say it again. What we are going through right now is going to paint a picture that generations to come will see if we trusted God or not. They're going to see if he is real in our life or not. Hey, church, the global pandemic is an issue. But church, do you trust God? Do you trust God? Your faith is on display. And you are painting a picture right now that generations to come will look back on and they will say, wow. Now there after the wow is up to us. They will say, wow, they were strong. 
They grew out of this thing. God was, was made known, manifested within. Or they will say something else. Not everyone who starts the race will finish the race. Not everyone who starts the race will finish the race. I know that sounds negative, but it's true. When I was in the ninth grade, our, our church had a big event, and, and we had all of us out there at, the, at Bellflower High, and we had all these events that we were going to do in the student ministry ministry that day. And, and they had a 440-yard race, you know, once around the track. And I was a young buck. I was, I was going to beat everybody. I had never ran a full 440. I'd always done sprints. Football's about sprints, not about long, you know. So when that gun went off, man, I bolted out of there. I was flying. I was, I was leading, leading, coming into the first turn. And all of a sudden, something hit me about coming out of that first turn, and I thought, <gasps> and I got tired fast. And I started slowing down. And as I slowed down, people went right by me. And I got about down that back straight, and I thought, why am I doing this? Why am I, why am I doing this? My legs got heavy. My chest was burning. While everybody else finished the finish line, I stopped at turn number three. I never finished that race. Humbling experience. Humbling experience because I remember thinking to myself, you are a failure. Everybody watched you do this, and you are a failure. Everybody's going to laugh. Everybody's going to make fun of you. You know what? Nobody made fun of me. Nobody made fun of me. All of those things that I did when I didn't finish the race, all of that was built in this brain right here. So often we don't finish what we start and we start making up all these things in our brain because we, we start thinking about what people think about us and what they're going to say about us and what they're going to do this and they're going to do this and they're going to do this. And I want you to say, hear what I'm going to say. Most people don't care. They really don't care. It's you who thinks they care. You live your life for one right there. Patience and endurance. When you start building up all that stuff in your head, you become like the second phrase, like in the jungle, the weak draw in the predators. If you show weakness in the jungle, the predator will sneak on you. Who is your predator? enemy. If you show weakness in God, what's he going to do? He's going to sneak in on you. He's going to sneak in right on you. You say, I don't understand why it's so hard, Pastor. Well, have you been with the Lord? I'm not judging you. I'm just asking you, have you been with the Lord? I'm not saying that in a critical manner. I'm just saying, have you been with the Lord? Have you spent time with God? You see, in order to spend time with God, you've got to spend time with God. Let's go back. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse number 16. Therefore, we do not lose heart. Even though our outward man is perishing, yet our inward man is being renewed day by day. Have you spent time with the Lord day by day? It's important. Why is it important? Inwardly being renewed. Open your heart and your mind. Open your heart and your mind. You know, I don't know about you, but when I eat breakfast, I eat breakfast to get me to lunch. Think about it. I eat breakfast to get me to lunch. I don't eat breakfast to get me to Saturday. I eat breakfast to get me to lunch. When I have lunch, it gets me to dinner. When I have dinner, it gets me through the night to a snack. Maybe two. And then back to breakfast. Our lives are built on moving to the next thing. So let me ask you straight up. Inwardly being renewed means that we move from God point to another God point to another God point to another God point day by day. So often we think that we get church on Sunday and then I go all week till next Sunday. I'm going to tell you, you're going to tank on Monday. You're going to tank on Monday. Well, God should be able to last all week. 
God will not give you today what he's designed for tomorrow. God has something for you tomorrow, but he's not going to give it to you today. Just like you don't eat breakfast today for Tuesday or Wednesday. You eat breakfast to get to lunch. Are you renewing day by day with the Lord? Are you, are you studying God on your own? Are you praying with God, walking with God, singing to God? You say, well, I don't sing. I'll bet you do. I'll bet you do. Listen, I, I've grown up in church. I'm 52 years old. I've been in the church since, since I, I was in the womb in the church. I mean, I've been in church. And I've had so many people either tell people around me or myself, hey, I don't sing. And I'm going to tell you straight up, yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. Because there's people out there that they can sing in their heads so good. And they can sing in the shower. They can sing in the car. But they refuse to sing in a worship service. Hey, I'm not judging you. But I'm going to tell you straight up. Honestly, nobody cares how bad you sing or how good you sing. God just wants you to sing. Just sing. Don't let the devil stop you. Don't let the devil stop you. Open your heart and your mind. So often as Christians, we get in the habit of coming in and opening only our mind because we want to gather in more knowledge, gather in more understanding, gather in more wisdom. And only our mind is open. And we guard our heart. Because the heart is where we get hurt. Hey, I get it. But God's word pierces the heart. And you need to let your heart open up for God. You need to let your heart open up for God. Renew yourself day by day. Allow your heart and your mind to be open. And let God soothe both of them, comfort both of them, enhance both of them, strengthen both of them, so that you do not quit. So that you do not quit. Second Timothy chapter six verses uh, chapter four verses six through seven. This is again another familiar piece of scripture that, that I just absolutely fell in love with. And it says this, I, I want you to see it. Verse number six, for I am already poured out as a drink offering and the time of my departure is at hand. Paul is about to die. He's about to die. And he says, I'm being poured out as a drink offering. Now you gotta understand, the drink offering was the last sacrifice. There was the burnt offering, the grain offering, the drink offering. The last sacrifice and we're done. And Paul is saying, I'm, I'm at the drink offering, guys. I'm at the drink offering. My departure is at hand. Yet, he says, I have fought a good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. And I want you to see, I have fought. I have finished. I have kept. That is a twofold ing. And it says, completed actions and continued results. Paul lived his life to complete actions that would have continued results. Continued results. Paul's results of what he did when he fought, finished, and kept is still pouring out into our lives today. It's continued results. Hey, Christian, what you do for God will have continued actions and continued results. My life counts generations to come. Not because I'm a pastor, because I'm a believer. My life counts generations to come. The church counts generations to come. The church counts generations to come. Are we going to trust God? Completed action with continued results. Trust him. Don't give up. Don't give up. Let's recap. Recap, we'll close it down. Do not lose heart. Live day by day. Don't let fear creep into such a way, to such a way that it paralyzes you from moving forward. Don't let fatigue wear you down that you quit. Because quitting is always going to leave you with a what if. And you could have been just short of something great. Don't quit. Outward versus inward. 
seen versus unseen? Do you see your life as the eternal side, or do you only see what's in front of you? Right now, we have a lot that we're seeing. We're seeing a lot right in front of us. And a lot of Christians are worried about what's right in front of us. And even if we weren't in the pandemic, Christians are still afraid of what's in front of us. My job, my bills, my this, my that, my this, blah, 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 blah. Hey, hold on. Everyone can see that, but you're not everyone. You're a child of the king. And when you're the child of the king, you can see that your life has eternal implication. So start looking for that. Living by faith, not just by sight. God encourages us. We should encourage others. I know that's difficult. Because when you are down, it's hard to pick somebody else up. Pastor, do you always pick people up? No, I don't. I fail at that. I'll be honest. I'm the pastor that's willing to admit that stuff. I'm not perfect. Aren't you glad? But I will tell you straight up. You have to pick people up. If you put more effort into putting people down than you do picking them up, then you are one miserable person. You're one miserable person. Start picking people up. You don't know what their life looks like. You don't know what they're dealing with. You don't know what's happened in their life, and you don't know what's going to happen in their life. So pick people up and encourage them. Don't let somebody quit. Don't quit. Don't give up. Tomorrow's a new day. It's darkest just before the dawn. Stick it out. Stick it out. Don't give up. Open your heart and your mind. Open your heart and your mind. When you go in the presence of God and you're praying to the Lord, open your heart and your mind. Open your heart and your mind. Let God have all of you. Let God have all of you. Don't give up. Completed actions with continual results. Your life matters. Your life matters. You are viable. Jesus gave his life for you. You are vital. You are so precious in the sight of God. Don't give up. Suicide rates are killer. Between 46 and 48,000 people a year commit suicide in the United States. Over a million people plus actually put a plan together. Over three million people a year think about it. Please, don't give up. You are precious in the sight of God. Draw near to him, and he will draw near to you. Day by day, renew yourself in him. Don't go long stretches. Allow your heart to be touched by God and your mind. Minute by minute, complete actions that will have continual results. You are worth it. Jesus does make a way. If I could have the music team come on up. I've asked them to sing this Waymaker song one more time for you. As they're coming up, I want you to take some time and just reflect in your life. And right there in your home, just close your eyes and pray. Say, God, strengthen me day by day. Maybe you've been going a couple days without praying. Maybe you've been going a couple days without reading God's precious word. Maybe you've, maybe it's been a while since you reached out to someone and just told them, hey, man, I'm thinking about you and praying on you. Maybe it's been a while since you, since you looked at eternity. Maybe it's been a while since you remembered that we wrestle not with flesh and blood, but with principalities and powers. 
And I want you to see something. Maybe it's been a while since you understood and remembered that you are not wrestling. You're not fighting with what you can see. You're fighting with what is invisible. And if you're getting all worked up about what you can see, you're missing the real fight. The real fight is in the invisible world of principalities and powers. And my God is bigger than all of that. And I trust him. Christian, maybe you need to rededicate your life. Maybe you need to get back in touch with God and say, God, I've drifted away. I need to recommit myself to you. Today would be a good day. Christian, maybe, uh, maybe there's someone you're praying for to come to know Jesus for the first time. Don't give up praying for that person. If you're that person that needs to receive Jesus, I want you to know Jesus never gave up on you. And his life was given for you. I want you to receive him today. Ask him into your life. Ask him into your heart. Ask him to be your savior. Ask him to forgive your sin. Ask him to renew you day by day. Salvation is a one-time thing. Ask him. He'll come in. You are here moving in our midst. I worship you. Lord, I worship you. You are Who you are That is who 
you are. That is who you are. That is who you are. That is who you are. Who you are.